we are at Royal Avenue and 7th Street Southwest at the foot of what was once called American Hill before the name was Canadianized to be Mount Royal. That's a whole other story and I'm not going to tell it right now, but that's an easy one for you to track down. On the southwest corner of Royal and 7th Street, you can still see house number 801. This was built by the American diplomat, journalist, and author James R. Davidson around 1907. And Davidson was known around the world for a book he wrote before he moved to Calgary called The Island of Formosa, Past and Present, published in 1903. And it's still consulted to this day for people who are interested in learning about Taiwan. But Davidson made his mark in Calgary not as an author, but as a Rotarian, a man who came to be called the Marco Polo of Rotary. If you're interested in that story, I suggest you read Fred Stenson, novelist Fred Stenson's 2014 history of the Rotary movement in Calgary. A little literary trivia, uh, a little more literary trivia with James Davidson. In 1907, the world famous rock star writer Rudyard Kipling came to Calgary on a whistle stop tour across the country. Uh, he was met at Calgary Station uh, by an entourage, including uh, James Davidson. James Davidson was driving the car. It was a very fancy touring car with uh, no top, and they took uh, so Davidson took him uh, took Kipling and his wife on a breeze through Stephen Avenue, and then up Center Street. They got off out of the car um, at the top of Rotary Park, and they took in the view of the city. And that is where Roger Kipling uh, declared Calgary the Wonder City of Canada. So now you know who is driving the car. But it really brought you to Royal Avenue to talk about Winifred Eaton Reed, then known as the world famous novelist Onoto Watana. Reeve and her husband lived in this house at 801 Royal Avenue from 1939 until the mid-50s. Now that was her second Calgary chapter and I'm going to talk more about that at the stop in front of the Barnhart Apartments a few blocks away. Right now I want to give you a little background and tell you about Reeve's first Calgary chapter and that was between the years 1917 and 1924. So in 1970, 1917, sorry, Reeve moves to Calgary with her second husband, Frank, and they are intent on becoming Alberta ranchers. They start out on a farm in, near Beddington, not the neighborhood we know now, a little further north and east, and soon they have purchased 10,000 acres near Morley. Um, they bought the Beauview branch and they move out there full time. Winifred Reeve is in her early 40s. She's the mother of three school-aged children. She is a prolific Montreal-born, New York City-based novelist of Chinese descent, known to her legion of fans as Onoto Watana, the author of many uh, Japanese American romances and she is considered one of the first Asian Canadian writers. Her life story uh, is phenomenal and uh, if you're interested in her um, there's a wonderful biography written by her granddaughter Diana Burchell and I highly recommend um, that fascinating read. When Reeve arrived in Alberta she was looking to shed her Japanese persona. She jumped with both feet into her life as an Alberta rancher. She put away all her manuscripts in a trunk she called her morgue. By 1920 though, she could no longer ignore the itch to write. So she rented a, a, a writing pied-à-terre in Calgary and she dashed off a novel in five weeks. The Calgary Press welcomed her with open arms as the city's celebrity author. It was as if Danielle Steele had moved to contemporary Calgary. It was made such a splash. 
Reeve became part of the city's small literary community. She served as the branch president of the Canadian Authors Association. She gave speeches about the importance of Canadians writing Canadian stories. And she, she spent a lot of time talking about paying authors for their work. Reeve organized a week-long book festival in 1923 in Calgary, featuring Calgary authors. She hosted local authors at her home, and she read their work. And she also had a literary feud with the young Calgary-based novelist Laura Salverson in early 1924. And that feud played itself out in the pages of a national literary journal. It was a classic tale of literary ambition and jealousy. Reeve wrote three novels and several short stories while she was in Calgary during her first chapter. And there's a scene in her novel, Cattle, uh, published in 1923, that has particular resonance for us today. It's set in the Morley area on a ranch, but the story touches down in Calgary during the outbreak of the Spanish flu in October 1918. And I'd like to read you just a little bit from that scene. Calgary might have been likened at that time to a beleaguered city. The city of sunlight and optimism was now a place of pain and death. Scarcely a house escaped the dreaded visitor. A haunting sense of disaster now brooded over the city. Hospitals, schools, churches, theaters, and other public buildings were turned into houses of refuge. No one was permitted on the street without a mask, a piece of white gauze fastened across nose and mouth. That's from Winifred Eaton Reeves' novel, Cattle, from 1923. And it's it's really the only piece of Calgary literature that I can find that um, describes um, what was happening during the Spanish flu epidemic. By 1924, uh, Winifred Reeve was facing hard times. Tariffs on cattle and grain were forcing Frank Reeve to foreclose on their ranch. Winifred was also frustrated professionally. As money got tight in their household, she felt increasingly far from the literary centers where she knew she could make a living. And the small provincial atmosphere of Calgary uh, in 1924 felt more and more restrictive to her. So only a few, after a few short years in Alberta, Winifred left Frank and she headed back to the United States, eventually to Hollywood, where she try to make her living as a screenwriter. She stayed away for seven years and in 1931 returned to Calgary and to Frank. But that is chapter two of Winifred Reeves' Calgary story and I'll tell you more about that at a later stop.